I'm Juliana de Oliveira Mota and I come from Alsace and I will talk to you about the third French individual and national food consumption, so ANCA3, and more specifically uh, the data for microbiological risk assessment that we can find in this survey. So um, and I will focus this presentation on the models for domestic refrigerator temperatures. So ANCA3 is the third study on the food consumption and eating habits of the French population. It was performed between 2014 to 2015. We have uh, representative samples of adults and children who was enrolled in the study. We have information available about food consumption habits, such as the type of food consumer, the quantities of food consumed by day or the consumption of supplements such as vitamins and others. We also have information about dietary behaviors such as the consumption of raw foods, the food storage methods and the exceeded use by date. So ANCA3 as you can see is a rich source of data. One of the main conclusions was that the temperatures in the refrigerators were not always appropriate, which can modulate the microbiological risk for consumers, especially for psychotropic uh, pathogens like uh, Listeria monistogens or Yersinia. And it also has a role in spoilage. In the literature, we have some studies by country about these temperatures and we have a recent review about the effect of the temperatures in uh, the refrigerators and the growth of uh, the microorganisms. So ANCA3 is a unique opportunity to gather knowledge because we have real values that were um, uh, collected by ANCA3 interviewer at the home of the population. So here we are going to focus on this uh, type of data. So how we proceed? So we had ANCA3 raw data and we selected some parameters such as the sex and the age class of the reference person, the location they live, the season of the collection, the storage temperatures, the ponderation and the study design parameters. After that, we designed the survey, the survey on our software. We described the data. And then we fit this data for future quantitative microbiological risk assessment studies. And we wanted to put it available and accessible for other risk assessors and other uh, risk assessment studies. So the analysis were made at the level of the household with the reference person, which means that uh, we take the reference person, meaning who is responsible for buying the food and stock storage in the, the fridge. So let's start with the data description and analysis. So uh, from the parameters that we selected before, we wanted to know which of them impacts on the model output and we saw that sex seems not to impact on the model output, so the temperature. So further analysis will only include season, region and the age of the person. So we did a generalized linear models to uh, see how these parameters impact in the, in the model output. So after that, we wanted to select uh, different subgroups. And here we have uh, how we selected this subgroup. So if we have a p-value reference of 0.05, here we have in green the significant uh, p-values. And here we have the non-significant p-value. After this, we are able to determine that we had three uh, subgroups for season two subgroups for region and one, uh, two subgroups for, for each. We wanted to be more precise, so we reduced this pair value to 0 0.01 uh, to determine the subgroups. So here we have the subgroups that we chose. We have nine. So we have for the overall population, two for the season and two for the region. So cold, warm, north and south. And then we combine the north with warm and the cold in the north with the warm and the cold season. After that, we wanted to fit the distribution to make it easier to uh, be uh, usable by other risk assessors 
To do so, we fit the distribution with the R package with this Bruce. We shift the distribution to include several distribution laws. So we added 100 to the temperature. We tested for four um, family laws of distribution. So log normal, normal, gamma, and logistic law distribution to find the best fit distribution. And of course, we took in consideration the representativeness weight of each individual. So here, what is what we found. So the gamma distribution remained from the first to the third place for all subgroups and the logistic and log normal distributions ranked uh, at first, so the best fit for the third, for three and two subgroups respectively. However, the difference between the AEC and BIC uh, criterion volumes of the three first uh, distribution were low. So after that, we had two options. One option was to have only one family distribution for all subgroups. We can choose the gamma law for the sake of uniformity for all the characteristic, characteristic subgroups of population. And here we have the results of the simulated uh, data versus the raw observed data. So what we can see is that uh, the data fitted quite well, except for the northern warm season, where we had a difference over than 0 0.5 degrees. Another option is uh, to choose a specific family distribution for each subgroup. So we choose the best fit distribution, so the distribution that ranked first. So uh, for uh, the north cold season and northern cold combination, we apply the logistic distribution and for the south and south and warm uh, uh, group, we apply the log normal distribution. And here you have the new results colored. So blue for the logistic and green for the log normal distribution. And we see that this really fits well. However, if we see the mean difference, I go back to the gamma distribution, the mean difference was 0 0.3 for the mean and the median. And here with the best fit distribution, the mean difference is 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 for the median and the mean and the median. So the mean difference is not really huge. So the choice of the option one or the option two it depends, it really depends on the risk assessor uh, if you want to be real specific or if you want to go faster and uh, more general. So why uh, we are focusing, why we are focused on these temperatures is because it really impacts in the growth of uh, the hazards on the food. Here we have uh, an example of potential impact of different temperatures on the growth of Listeria monocytogenes in cooked ham from the caterer. So we have the scenario for the temperature. We have eight degrees versus 6.45 degrees. So eight degrees is the temperature hypothesis of a reference laboratory for determining the shelf life according to uh, Listeria monocytogenes. And 6.44, as you remember, is the temperature that we uh, simulated before for all the population. And we compare the storage uh, duration so three days, which is uh, the, the duration of, uh, of, uh, of storage of this cooked ham, uh, which is recommended when we uh, buy this ham at, uh, on the caterer. And seven days is what we observe uh, by Inca 3, uh, in Inca 3 uh, survey. And here, the nation level, uh, the pH, and uh, in ACL is uh, the same for the uh, the two uh, the two scenario. So here we can have we, here you can see the difference. So at three days, we don't see too much difference between the two curves, and this is the recommended duration for the storage of the cooked ham. 
but in reality people uh, consume this uh, cooked ham seven days or over than seven days so here you can have a huge difference over than one log CFU per gram. So now that we have this data, with this raw data, this uh, simulated data, this fitting uh, distributions, we want to uh, put it uh, in a place where we can share it and make it accessible for other risk assessors that don't have this kind of data. So raw data is available on the website data.gov.fr. However, information about these raw data are mainly in French, so there's not accessible to non-French speakers. And the treatment of this data may be complex, so it's time consuming. So we need a format that may be understandable by all and usable by all. To do so, ANSES uh, takes a part of the RAKIP project, so RAKIP for Risk Assessment, Modeling and Knowledge Integration Platform, which is a free and accessible resources for all knowledge platform and give available tools and databases for risk assessment studies. So how this work and how you can contribute to this RAKIP platform? So you have your R script, you can uh, provide this R script in three files. You must provide your R scripts in three files, one with the model prediction, one with the parameters, and one with the graphic. And we have to annotate this metadata with an harmonized annotation with controlled vocabularies. So we have a master table about these vocabularies, but if you want to have more information, a basic, a basic information, you can, um, type on Google MiraRAM for minimum request and um, annotation for risk assessment models. Uh, so uh, BFR uh, wrote an article about this minimum information uh, that you can apply in the annotation of your uh, metadata. Then we have these four files and we converted it in an harmonized file and we uh, can download it in a RECI platform where you can find data, models, and other type of knowledge that can be used by users. So users can check the data, check the model, and it can uh, download it and reuse it in their risk assessment models. After that, it can also contribute to this model repository. So let's go for the conclusion. So here we uh, talk about the temperature data analysis. So we saw that temperature profiles depended on season and location, and we fitted the distributions and we give the best uh, uh, we give the best fit distribution laws estimated. As you can see, Anker three is a rich source of data not a laboratory data, real data that are applied by consumers. And here you have data about temperatures, but also about food consumption, and we can draw consumer profiles, for example. And this is very useful for risk assessment. And this kind of data uh, will improve food safety uh, by uh, being shared and be accessible. For that, uh, we are participating in the harmonized harmonized annotation of the metadata and uh, we will provide this data in a standardized format and uh, put it in a common platform that you can will check soon if you want this is in, in progress but we are uh, soon uh, uh, put it available in this uh, platform so thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to highlight that uh, this project is part of the One Health UGP Care project, which aims to identify relevant data for risk assessment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Juliana, for this interesting speak. Uh, we have time for one or two questions. Uh, I have one question. 
this is the the first uh, indicator that you you made available from the Inca uh, survey. Do you plan to extract other interesting parameters for modelers? Yes, yeah, so yeah, this is the only the beginning. We are we will going to um, to do other uh, other information such as uh, the consumption of uh, specific uh, food components or other uh, food habits like the consumption of uh, supplements or other. This is just the beginning. It's just an example that we are going to put available.